Greeting stamp sleuths. Today I'm going to take a look at my favorites from that last three box stamp auction win. And I have these. These are ones I'm going to be putting in my collection uh, for the most part. I'll let you know if otherwise. You can see here there is a Manila stock page full of U.S. mint. I'm trying to build up my U.S. collection in particular with mints. And what's nice about these is they're all blocks. Some interesting um, issues including a strip here of self-adhesives issued in 1999. Interesting. And a couple of oldies. That's nice. Uh, also in this uh, three box lot was a whole bunch of hidden, they were kind of buried in envelopes, um, Great Britain mint blocks. And uh, this looks like there's several of them in this, this issue. At least two, I think. Yeah, two. So these, uh, again, I'm also building up by uh, Great Britain Mint. This was the um, set that uh, I was concerned because they were stuck inside. And I don't know if you can see it here. On the very bottom corner here is just a little bit of adhesion impressions from uh, a couple of drops of water, actually. Why can't I use this? This one's fine. So I'll be keeping these. They'll go in my um, Queen Elizabeth collection. There's more of these kind of things in here that I found in envelopes. This one's from uh, Turks and Caicos. And then another one here also from, uh, this is Trinidad and Tobago. Nice flight cover uh, celebrating 50 years of airmail in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, this is looks like it's a Guatemala issue. Now, there was a lot of mint hidden in between pages. This is interesting because it's got a little bit of paper in it. What's this all about? Uh, it's got a little letter. Five stamps of Quetzalbird. Well, uh, no. Okay. Five stamps collecting uh, the Boy Scouts, Baden-Powell. That's what this is talking about. So that's interesting. And I do collect um, Scout-related um, stamps. Uh, Jamaica, showing artwork of art, Jamaican artifacts, uh, appear, appear to be wooden. I also collect Mexico. And there was a whole bunch of Mexico mints and ones I had not seen. So I'm really happy to put those into my collection. I don't know if this is the same. So in uh, one of those boxes was a box with orange containers and inside were envelopes. I think it was either box two or three. And this is uh, what was tucked in to those. They weren't obvious at first necessarily. I think I may have shown some of them on the, those videos, but um, they're here now and I'm going to be keeping them. Now, what would you do? What would you have kept? Would you have kept any of this, all of it, none of it? I like souvenir sheets, love the fish issues. That's from Malawi. Uh, here's another uh, souvenir sheet, Vir Vir British Virgin Islands. My mouth is tangled up. A Cayman Islands. Now I've got this issue in individual stamps and uh, the five Quetzalbirds, there they are. One, two, three, four, five. They appear to be mint in a really nice condition and they are never hinged. That's nice. That'll go in my Guatemala collection. Uh, looks like there's a Bahamas. It appears to be perhaps related to the royal family. Uh, yes, no, it's a Christmas issue. That's nice. Well, my Christmas collection. And on they go. This, this There was a surprising number of souvenir sheets uh, in and souvenir blocks of four in here. Here's one that will definitely go into my um, British, or, or not British, but my Queen Elizabeth stuff. And it's nice that it's got a, a, an envelope that it goes plus a postcard, 1977. That's really, really nice. The, the Jubilee. Um, this is actually quite a lot that I've kept considering because a lot of the envelopes have used and whatnot. Again, some more Great Britain mint. Interesting with the Great Britain mint stuff I've got here is that a lot of this will no longer, well, it won't have Queen Elizabeth profile anything coming out of the UK anymore. We'll have a, a King Charles. So it be uh, nice to see 
how that transition goes in the stamp world. Uh, uh, I think she's well missed. She was quite a, a lady. Gained some more of hers. Every time I see her image on stamps, I think about that. Because she was a big part of my stamp collecting life. Okay, these are machins in blocks, which is great because I collect them. And I do not have them in this configuration with the different uh, values um, put together on one block. Uh, this appears to be a Princess Diana commemorative uh, from her death. Uh, there's a whole little folio here. There she is. 1961 to 1997. That's such a short lifespan, man. I don't know. Um, Princess Diana stamps. I don't know. Oh, this is just a... Oh, there's something in here. Okay, this is the strip from Great Britain. This is the morning strip. They used purple instead of black, and it has it here. Queen Elizabeth approves controversial stamps despite Earl Spencer's objections. Interesting, because it's got kind of the whole story behind this stamp. I rather like that. Yeah, this was put out, what do they say? And I don't see a date on any of this right now. 1997, I think it says. Is that what it says? Is that when it was? Yes. So, this would have been in the newspaper at that time. It looks like there was a little bit of a kerfuffle over that. Again, there's more here from Great Britain. I'm not going to take them all out because I don't want to damage them. And you can see the uh, stamp image poking up through the um, glass in the, the window in the envelope. And these will all be going directly into my Great Britain account. This looks appears to be... A set. Let's just take a look to verify it. And it appears to be the ones, yes, of the uh, war medals. And it looks like there's more than one in here. Just take a quick peek. Yeah, there is. So those are nice to have as blocks. This is a coronation stamp commemorating that. And it is a coronation of 1953, but it definitely isn't a 1953 issue. It just looks too modern. Yeah. But it's beautiful and it's complete and it's there and it's going into my collection. All of these, like I said, are. This is a block of um, another Great Britain. Here's some more Great Britain here. All of this I have sorted so that I can put them right into my um, albums. This is interesting. This is a stained glass window issue from Israel. What's neat about this is that they've got the issue date here of 1973. The Scott numbers. 12 stamps. Face values and then um, face values here. And there's quite a lot of them. And they have all of the tabs, which is the little part on the bottom showing information on it. Plus, they've got a stamp on the, uh, a block of stamps on the back. That's really interesting. Places to visit and love. Interesting collection. Assemblage. Okay, this is from Botswana. Historical monuments, I think it says. Let's take this off so we can see what, yes, historical monuments. And the discoloration on this, I believe, is on the paper, not on the stamp. Oh, no, it is. It's the darkness in the clouds. And it's showing what looks to be parks in Botswana. Um, souvenir sheets of six historical monuments, 1977. Face value of $5 U.S. Now, what that really means, I don't know, because... Face value uh, in other dollars can vary. This is the sil Silver Jubilee from Gibraltar, 1977 issue with two individual stamps, which is also very nice. Uh, this says Scott, 1977, Silver Jubilee. There's a lot of Silver Jubilees, which is nice. Now, I believe that these are from Great Britain. Basically, for the pure and simple reason that they have castles. At the top, they have Carnarfon. White Castle, Colty Castle, Kidwelly Castle, Sickleth Castle, Haleth Castle, I'm probably murdering all this, Raglan Castle, Thonbaran Castle, and uh, they look to be some sort of um, semi-postal or uh, Cinderella. There's no denominations on them. They're just scenes, and what's interesting is that it's a three-part design to do, uh, the, it's almost like a pencil sketch of these castles, and it's all done over the span of the three 
art design of the stamps and there's more here. Conway, they sound like Pembroke. They sound English to me. Man on Briar Castle. Uh, correct me if you're wrong. If you know anything about these, let me know. So it's, this is a rather brief video. I just wanted to show you what I kept out of all of this. I did keep some other U United States issues, but they were used and early, and uh, there was just too much material. Other than what you see here, there was a, a couple of stock pages this size of used United States and a couple of albums of United States because I want to um, expand my U.S. collection. But other than that, this is what I kept. Essentially, Great Britain, a bit of U U.S., and some Commonwealth. And Mexico, of course, as I've mentioned. What would you have kept? Would you have kept any of this? Uh, would you have kept all of it? Um, or would you have just uh, cherry-picked out the very, very, very best? Um, how do you collect? Like, all of these sheets, are they... Have, Things that you would put aside, I think they're neat because they show the stamp as they're issued and the way the post office made them. And I kind of find that an interesting thing to have in my collection. I do like the fact that this has a newspaper article with it. And I will keep those together because this paper here and these stamps here kind of belong together. And again, it's it's interesting. It does say the first official stamps bearing portless portraits of the late Princess Diana have just been released by Royal Mail. And uh, original scheduled for release, for release shortly after a tragic death. These stamps were withheld when Diana's brother, Earl Spencer, objected to them. So there, it says it had a storm of controversy. So what's really interesting is that this little bit here adds, in my opinion, a great deal of, of um, collectability to this because you understand that this was not something that was easily created and, and, and caused pain for the family just as as her death did, I'm sure. Um, on that note, uh, would you have kept these together? Would you uh, have even bothered thinking twice about it? Uh, I know that stamps carry sometimes more history than what they appear to, and that, to me, is part of their lure. Anyways, that's it for today. Until next time, keep on looking into and for stamps. Stamp Sleuth signing off.